Greetings, sentient being, and welcome back to another episode of Punkworks. I am Pluto, and you hopefully haven't been Trojaned yet. If you have, and you deserved it, go the fuck home. If you didn't deserve it, though, pay attention, and I will teach you by the numbers. I will show you what a Trojan is, how to make one, and most importantly, how to defend against one, because everybody knows, that, you know, there are all sorts of ways that you can get Trojan, like answering the wrong email. So let's not get Trojan. To start off, we should probably understand first what a Trojan actually is. What is a Trojan? A Trojan is named for, you know, the famous Trojan horse from, from the Trojan War fame of being a means in which to infiltrate an unsuspecting enemy. You're sliding something in that looks like a gift, but inside is wrapped something dangerous. In terms of the game Greyhack, a Trojan might be a binary that is normally thought to be safe, that is in fact not. So we can take the default code of PS, the, the command to show you, you know, what processes are running on your machine, and we can do stuff to it. The normal output of your command would look something like this if it were the regular PS command. What we want to do for now is to hide the name of our Trojan. We're going to just decide that Shell is our Trojan today. So what we do, we intercept the input that would normally be, you know, printed for the output, and we go through it line by line, and if the line contains Shell, we skip it. Otherwise, we smash it into the output, and we print it. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And now you can see shell no longer shows up. If you were to place this, you know, poisoned PS in place of a user's actual PS command, that they would find in their bin folder, then this would run, you know, instead of the one that they would think, and then you can use that to hide your stuff. However, you do have to be aware that you know, someone's script can use code to, you know, do this without, you know, they can just not run yours. They can run their own and see what's actually there, okay? But if they're not using their own and they're relying on, you know, stuff that's in bin, then that is a good way to get them, you know, with the Trojan. It's just poison each and every single one of these. And here's the thing. So you're not really going to be you know, doing this to shell, you're gonna, what you're going to be doing is hiding the Trojan itself. So let's go ahead and do that for the next step. Right, so we're going to go ahead and try to hide our totally not a Trojan. Now normally, if you were running a Trojan that was called not a Trojan, it would show up in PS. Um, I'm using Shell's script-based PS, which means it's getting around the poisoned file, because that's what you do. You don't rely on you know, something someone else can mess with, you use your own stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, so if I were to, so I, I went ahead and built this right here, so if I were to go ahead and run the poisoned one, you'll see it's hiding my Trojan. So if you relied on, you know, this, this file being in bin, See right there, we can go ahead and just do that. Boom. Now the poisoned version is in bin. If I can type. Okay. See? That's how you would hide your stuff. Okay, now we're gonna look at another example of a type of Trojan and then how to defend against it. So, you can take the normal command, poison it, and it will go ahead and remove what you tell it to remove. And if the target is not using, you know, custom stuff, they're relying on whatever's there in bin that you have replaced, then they won't even notice. Now, to defend against that, of course, you're going to want to use your own scripts, and most more importantly, 
you're going to kind of want to run them on a loop. So what I have here is a daemon that is being used by Shell uh, that was contributed by another player, Reddit Zero. Uh, I actually wrote this before Shell, and it just kind of runs on a loop and tells you exactly what is running on your machine. So let's uh, let's do something real quick, and we'll just we'll just make another backdoor, and we'll just send it in a funny direction. And there you go. Um, this isn't like that didn't go anywhere, but it still started the process, and you can see it popped up right there. And if I terminate the process, it goes away. So that's one way to see if different stuff happens to pop up on your system. Okay, okay so Trojan would be a hiding you know, something in there keeping you from noticing that it's there. And to get around that is to use your own methods, of course. Now, you can also have something running on a loop that is constantly monitoring all your files, locking things down, and checking logs, that sort of thing, to see what additional activity is taking place on your machine. Okay, so say, you know, they're too smart for that. They watched this video, and now they're not going to trust their own PostScript binary, okay? And they're going to be super paranoid, so they're going to constantly change their root password on their computer to try to stay safe, right? So, to stay ahead of that, you pop open Code Editor with the default code for the password command, and you poison that one. You model it off the real thing so it looks the same, and you go ahead and replace it with your version. All right, so let's take a look at that. Let's review our code. So functionally not too different here and here from the original code. The Trojan part is put here in the middle. Uh, so the hacker here was kind enough to leave some notes. So let's go ahead and remove, review the notes of the Trojan. Okay, If the password change that we run, that the user runs here is successful, then we check to see, was it a root password change? If it was, well, if it wasn't, we skip, and we just exit like normal. You know, normal things happen. If, however, a root password is successfully changed, then we do things. Now, I went ahead and changed the um, destination of our mothership because I was using an MPC machine and the admin caught on and remove the port forwarding, so I had to switch motherships, because uh, I'm not using any of my own machines, of course. <laughs> anyway, this is our new mothership, so it's going to connect using Secure Shell Connect Service to the mothership, and it's going to edit the password file by setting the new password and public IP and local IP, and then it's going to clear the log. It's going to move that log file over top of, you know, the old one, and then we're good. That's that's about it. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Let's copy this in, and I'm going to go ahead and put this into Scribus, and you can see it's already, I've already of course done some testing, so let's go ahead and clear that out, and we'll put our new code in. We'll save that, and then uh, let's see, we can just show, I can let's see, it's, it's right there, so we just go ahead and make that, and we're going to throw it in bin so that it overwrites the original one in bin. Now when we run that password command, if I could type, and we change the root password, we're going to change it to Bob. We're none the wiser. It looks like we just changed the password to Bob, but if we go over here, oh, not that one, uh, this one? No. This one, there we go. If we go over here to our mothership, this is where our mothership is. You can see right here, the password file doesn't have anything in it. Why didn't that work? It didn't work because I'm dumb. <laughs> uh, this shouldn't be local machine. This should be uh, mothership dot host computer uh, because yeah, we're not getting the password. Yeah, so that, that 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 actually did something that we didn't want it to do. So what we want is it to actually write it to the correct 
correct place. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. <laughs> We'll just clear all that out, put the new in, there we go, and Bob, okay, well, now, now let's try again, see if we successfully got it. There it is, we have successfully, surreptitiously snooped the password. And the user, and we're just going to go ahead and check it again. So let's do it again. Okay. Bin password root, and we're going to change it to bird. Okay. And there we go. So there. Now we have a Trojan that doesn't show up on PS. So how do we defend against that? Before we move on, let's go ahead and just take another look at our code here so that you can get a good look at what we just did. So normal password command, if we're changing the root password, we get local credentials so that we can back up the log for cleaning it later. And that's what we do. We back it up, we contact the mothership, which leaves a log that creates a log. So we write the information to the mothership and then we copy the old log over the new log so it looks like nothing happened. And then we exit. Pretty sneaky, right? Okay, let me show you how to defend against this so that it doesn't happen to you. Here we are, the mighty, mighty sniffer. The meta exploit library provides you with a function called sniffer, and what that does is it simply listens on the machine for that. Right there, for connect service. That's its pretty much its sole function either secure shell or FTP connection, it will print out that connection. That's why we're going to print it. It returns that connection. And if we pass it a, a boolean of one, it will also save the encode.source if the connection is encrypted so that you can attempt to reverse the encryption. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like if we are to run a sniffer. Go ahead and do that. Very, very simple tool. And let me see here. We need, I'm going to need to dial in <laughs> this real quick. So uh, let's see, LIX0. Okay, let me do the RSI. Totally not a Trojan's, the one we want. Glass pool, shell. Okay, now I'm running on the same target as this one. Okay, so these are lined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build sniff.source just right here. So now we have sniff. Okay. And now I'm going to run it. And it's actually, that's running my own sniff command, so I have to... <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't matter because it's going to show you... this. This My sniff command does exactly what I just showed you here. The only difference is it prints this line. Um, so yeah, we're just going to do that. Okay, so we're sniffing right now with our code functionally the same as this one. And we're going to go ahead and run our password command again. And we're going to change it back to Bob. Look at that. Incoming data captured. Source, that's us. Destination is the mothership. Okay, let me, let me show you here. If I were to just copy this, I'm just going to put it right there. You can see it snooped that, and it even snooped the password of the mothership. So if someone tries to Trojan you and you use a sniffer, you can fight back. Pretty cool, right? So Trojan, how to fight the Trojan. Don't get Trojan, bro. That about wraps it up, folks. The two types of Trojans that we covered today are the Trojan that acts as a reverse shell sitting in the background pretending to be another program. We counter that, again, by making sure to use our own method of discovering these programs instead of relying on someone else's. The second kind of Trojan is the Connect Service Trojan, where it phones home to the mothership, and we detect that with the sniffer, and the sniffer allows us to fight back. 
Okay. So that does it for today. Um, go ahead and let me know if this is useful to you, if you would like to see other topics covered. And of course, every like, every subscribe helps me out immensely and, make, and, and you know, just means that I'm going to be hopefully able to make more of these. Yeah, anyway, thanks. Bye.